everyone, my name is Marcus and you're watching the ReefNab YouTube channel. So, I've just got back from getting hitched. There's now a Mrs. ReefNab who's sitting behind the camera over there. And we were away for four or five days and as you can see, I've done nothing with the tank since I got back. Uh, and I'm only back for two days before we go on a honeymoon for about three weeks. sufficient salt to bring that up to the correct salinity and then my auto water changes will be good to go for the next month as well. So let's get to it. Now when working on the tank it's always good to have these kind of gloves. It just helps keep oils and creams from your skin out of the tank and it protects your skin from anything that's in the tank. Now as I said first up I have this filter sock that's been overflowing for the last day obviously. Now, I am going to change this out for a fresh one right now, although that will not remain in the tank. If you're going to be away from your tank for any longer than a week, I would always recommend removing the filter socks altogether. Now I've already done a video on this alley scrubber, it's the Rain 2 uh, by Santa Monica. I'll link to that below. But I clean this approximately once every 10 days. So whilst I'm away for three weeks, it's gonna have to be cleaned a couple of times. Um, thankfully, my mum has volunteered to come over a couple of times while I'm gonna be away and this will be one of the tasks she does.
All right, so who wants some vegan, organic, homegrown, green hair algae? Yum yum. This is about two weeks worth of harvest, and as you can see, that's quite a lot. Bear in mind, hair algae like this is way more nutrient dense than catamorpha. So a big fistful of hair algae like this is equivalent to a lot more in terms of catamorpha if you were to be running a regular refugium or a, um, an algae reactor that runs on Kato. That is a very big harvest of grain hair algae. Anyway, I'll deal with that later. Back to the tank. All right, so we've done clean the glass, filter sock, skimmer, and algae reactor. Next thing on the list is I need to add a scoop of calc wasser to my calc stirrer. So even though I'm obviously doing two part dosing at the moment on my tank, I do still dose three liters of calc wasser a day through my calc stirrer. Currently my evaporation rate is between 3.2 and 3.5 liters. So um, I'm pretty much at the limit for what I can do for calc wasser, which is why I'm also dosing about 60 mil of two part a day. It's really easy to do. We just get one scoop of this calcium hydroxide, also known as calcwasser, and pop it into this reactor here. The lid just lifts straight up. This is an Avast Marine K1 calc stirrer. And this single channel dosing pump is what's driving it, dosing equally distributed throughout the day, three liters of RODI from my RO reservoir into this reactor, into the sump. So we've just gone through most of the major maintenance that needs to be done roughly weekly to my tank. Cleaning the glass, topping up calc wasser, cleaning the algae scrubber, and cleaning the skimmer. These are the tasks, as you've just seen, which are pretty simple. And if you've got a caring family member or a great friend, that's going to be able to visit your tank while you're on holidays. These are the kind of tasks that you should hopefully be able to get them to do to keep that stability and keep that regular maintenance occurring on your tank while you're away. But there are other things that need to be done on our tanks than just to work down in the sun. There's also going to be feeding the fish, most importantly. So for that, I'm going to show you a little bit about what I've got set up and what uh, I'm going to be having done while I'm away. First off, I have this auto feeder. This runs three times a day and drops a mixture of pellets into the tank. Of course, before I go away, I'll be putting new batteries in that because it's a very cheap one from eBay and it does go through batteries quite quickly. And two, I'm going to be filling it with food to make sure that it's going to last the entire time while I'm away. Now that is su sufficient. It is the bare minimum required nutrition for this tank. Three times a day, some pellets, none of the fish will starve. However, if you have someone visiting and you have better foods available, you should get them to feed the tank as well. So while I'm away, I'll be getting my mum when she visits to put a pinch of some flake foods in the tank and to...
full of RO. Once it's completely full, I'll be adding salt in there to make sure that I have a 70 litre batch of salt water ready to go for my daily auto water changes of 1.5%. That will last over a month, so that will be good to go. In this cupboard, I have my RODI reservoir. Now I have an auto refilling controller attached to that that I built myself. I will go through that in a future video, exactly how to build it. But basically what that means is when this tub is empty, as in the tank has used up all of the RODI from that tub, it automatically refills. So I never have to touch that. That's not a consideration. Most people probably don't have a setup like that. So you need to make sure your RODI reservoir is not only full when you go away on holiday, but it's big enough that it will last for the duration of while you're away. And if it's not big enough for while you're gonna be away, make sure that whoever's coming to look after your tank knows how to fill it, and more importantly, knows how to make sure that it's not gonna overflow. I would always recommend that everyone have very clear instructions on their RODI reservoirs, particularly if you don't use a float valve and you're relying on some kind of a timer or something else to make sure that you don't flood your house. The last thing that I'm going to do is I'm gonna clean up the mess that I have on either side of my tank. There's all kinds of fish accessories and equipment and gear, which is great for me because I know what it all is, but someone like my mum wouldn't have a clue. The only things that I'm gonna have in this area are the tools that I would expect her to use, which would be the glass cleaner, the, the dry fish food products, and then post-it notes for where the frozen food is and instructions on what else to do. And that's an important one. Give written instructions, no matter how many times someone may have looked after your tank or how much, little or how experienced you think they may be with marine fish keeping, written instructions and a help guide go a really long way. So let's clean up this area. Julian's thing and really long tongs, probably not gonna be needed. Smartphone lens kits and frag plugs, also probably not gonna be needed. pH probe calibration fluids, definitely not gonna be needed. Coral cutters and meters of silicon tubing, not gonna be needed. All right, so now that everything's away, what is going to be needed? Well, the flake food, basic tools for cleaning the glass, and instructions on what to do underneath the sump. Now I'm also gonna be getting out some of my coral foods. Um, I would put this in the realm of very optional for getting a tank sitter to do. Feeding corals, in my mind, is a nice to have, not a mandatory, especially in the short term. So if you're confident in your tank sitter and they're already gonna be doing something like defrosting frozen food, get them to add a small quantity of coral foods into that frozen food and broadcast feed it into the tank as well. If you have any doubts at all, just don't do coral feeding while you're away. Your corals will be fine for a short period of time, such as a couple of weeks. So that's probably about it. As you can see, for me, getting the tank ready to be left alone for a long period of time is not that difficult, especially because I'm gonna have someone coming every four to seven days to check on the tank. However, it's taken me quite a while to get to this point. I have a lot of automation on my tank. I have two different forms of dosing. I have auto top off, I have auto water change, I have an auto feeder, my lights are on a schedule, everything else is on a schedule through a smart power board. I have online monitoring and I have a Raspberry Pi reef cam, which I set up and I taught you how to do in a previous video. So I can always check on my tank at any time, both visually and through my KH lab, which is in there currently running a test. So I can always see my alkalinity. You don't necessarily need to have all these things, but over time, many reefers who do, uh, do find themselves away from their tanks for significant periods of time will head towards the automation side of the hobby, particularly in regard to critical things like auto top-off and feeding. 
I'll put some links in the description to some useful items like auto feeders and some of the equipment that I have on my tank that's helped me get to this point. I hope you found this video helpful. Don't forget to like and subscribe. My name is Marcus and you've been watching the Reef Nerd YouTube channel. Bye for now.